Here we have a couple of licks by Paul Gilbert that are based around the major arpeggio. They're nice rock approaches, so I'm going to use a Jackson guitar, bridge pickup, fat overdriven sound. I'm going to demonstrate the first one. Now, this is simply an E major arpeggio. And notice how we have the video set up so that this is the 12th fret. That way you can see a little more clearly what I'm playing. You're going to start off with your first finger on this E in the 12th fret, and you're basing it around this E bar chord. So if you know the arpeggio, the three notes in the key of E for an E chord, 1, 3, 5, would be E, G sharp, B. So there you're lining at one note per string. So instead of playing the B on the second string, you simply move it over to the third string. That would yield the following. If you notice what I'm doing with my index finger, I'm barring. Now, I'm not barring all six strings in the sense that I'm pressing them down. I'm using what's called a hinge bar in classical guitar. I'm concentrating pressure over on the first string because I need that E, but I'm actually using a dampening bar for all the rest of the strings. Here's why. Now, I'm a real dampening freak, and with overdrive, it's a challenge just to try and keep things clean. If I play it like this, watch my index finger. Well, let me ch finger it a normal way. like. You hear that? You hear my G's giving me fits because that open G just wants to start ringing. I could also do this. And in that case, you notice how I had 4 1, 4 1, 2. Now you might say, well, I can reach over and dampen over here. Well, you're getting perilously close to your other strings, and you've got to do a whole bunch of movement here. So let's change the fingering and look at another option. What if I were to go 4 1, 4 2, 3? Do you see how it just automatically falls in? I can keep my first finger in place instead of having to pick it up and move it. And the other beautiful part of this is it's working the weaker side of your hand. You have to work on those second, third, and fourth fingers instead of... I know it's not as easy, but we're talking about developing some great chops that are balanced. You don't just have a strong side of your hand and a weak side. So do you see that this is simply an E major arpeggio? Do you notice what I just do with my right hand? I wasn't using my index finger dampening. I was using right hand dampening. Watch very closely how I use the side of my thumb. I'm playing an upstroke on that first string. And as I play the upstroke, do you see how I come in and lay my side of my thumb from the joint to the end of the nail against those top four strings? The th top three, because I'm playing the first string. So. That's another dampening technique. And if you didn't notice earlier, there was one point where I played it and I used hybrid picking. Now you can't beat that for convenience because your fingers are right over the string. So I'm using my little finger for the first string, middle finger for the third string, pick for the fourth string. So I've given you a lot of options, both right hand and left hand, and I suggest you practice this in different positions because where you play it is going to affect things too, because your action obviously gets higher as you move up the fingerboard. The second lick that he's given us here is the same idea, but rhythmically it's a little bit different because we're still playing sixteenths. But notice how this was one E and a, two E and a. So it was an even two beat lick. We had eight notes, eight sixteenth notes, to complete our cycle. Let's go up here for our A arpeggio. We're moving up to the seventeenth position. And it's the same lick, but we're not going to ever hit that high C sharp. So we simply go. You're going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So see, it ends up down on the A, and then you jump over and start an octave higher. So this is a great way to take what might seem like a very symmetrical pattern, real organized and... Um, and not really tricky, and just move it rhythmically. Perhaps just shake, take the lick. And you see how I just took the lick, the arpeggio that Paul has given us here, and juggled the notes around. And in closing, don't forget you've got your great pedal tone approaches. Let's go back to you. Sounds like Eric Johnson or somebody You're using hybrid picking. And you run into some dampening issues, so it's a challenge when you start playing a lot of these things that are jumping from string to string. Here's some food for thought. Make sure you look at these arpeggios as being something other than just major arpeggios, because what happens if we flat the third? That would accommodate any minor chord you have to play over. So, for the E chord, the G sharp would move to G. 
okay? And remember, any of these arpeggios can be aligned for different chords. Experiment with doing things like perhaps sus4. I'm starting to mix the sus4, the 4 and the 3, and I get some lines instead of just looking at an arpeggio. I see that a lot of times when guys learn fast licks like this that are arpeggio-based or something, and especially, you know, sweet picking, you see people do this, you tend to always play it the same way. Slow down and juggle the notes around a little bit.